Alley. We're Trent and Alley, and now that we've moved on to the second half of this build, everything that's in a shortage lines up with when we need it. All it takes is one pandemic to throw construction into a tailspin. Insulation is the new toilet paper. But we're powering through and keeping our heads up. There's something really satisfying about watching you vacuum. You like that? <laughs> I, I really enjoy that. Subscribe and come along today. First attempt in mud season. As we get creative, running out of materials. I don't hate insulation as bad as I hate trying to find insulation. <laughs> I've said it many times, I know I would change my ways, I know for sure When all the crows decide to meet They settle down beneath my feet I've got it right and I got it wrong But I learned my lesson hanging on There's one thing that you like absolutely notice kind of the second you walk in here. And it has nothing to do with temperature. The sound is deadened. Like it's yeah. like you could, it feels like a, a confined insulated space. It feels, feels really good. So now that this room is fully insulated on the walls, all we have to do is have the spray foam guys come and fill the roof beams uh, with spray foam, then put an air barrier on here and this room's ready for inspection. Wow. Now, when you do the uh, insulation, you have to like cut it and tear it and shove it and bend it and little particles go everywhere. So we were wearing respirator masks, but it makes an absolute mess. Now, this is thermofiber. It's a, it's a mineral wool. The particles and stuff aren't as bad as fiberglass, but it still makes an absolute mess. And it is not something that you wanna have all over all your stuff. So the first order of business today is to get all the garbage and all the supplies that we're gonna be using, an example, the insulation out of this room. And then we're gonna start taking everything in the house, moving it into this room, organizing it the best we can. And then we have about four and a half bags of insulation left and we're gonna start insulating parts of the house. We very quickly got the sunroom all vacuumed and cleaned up. The guys rearranged the whole room so there's a ton of space to store everything. And we need as much space as possible because I don't know if you can tell, we have accumulated so much junk. It's not junk. In this house. It's like there's half- tools and building supplies. Okay, tools and building supplies. And a lot of decor that shouldn't be in here. <laughs> and all of it needs to go into the sunroom. Okay, so what's the strategy? strategy yeah <laughs> so however you want to do it the twinkle of your nose or by using your hands you just got to move all the stuff in the house into the sunroom when i was younger we used to go visit my grandma in uh, her retirement community and we'd watch bewitched and i love lucy because that was like all she wanted to watch and in bewitched it's like an old tv show she would crinkle her nose and the whole house would be cleaned before her husband came home yeah, everybody knows that. That's why I said, oh, oh you want to tweet. That's them. exactly what I want. <laughs> you want to use your hands. <laughs> One day. Everybody knows Bewitched. Come on. <laughs> the water's rising. The dam is breaking in. We have every piece of everything known to man just crammed into this house. We need to organize it and we need to kind of move it around. We're gonna put things into boxes to make it so that we have to pick up every piece of everything to move it whenever we need to move it. So I think all of the power tools are gonna to go in this box after we clean this box out. So let's make a pile with power tools okay. and then anything that goes to plumbing will go in its own little section. There's a bag for garbage. Uh, any nails and screws will all go into one area and then any like saw blades or hole saws or anything like that 
goes into that box that's over there. Okay. And then anything that's a hand tool, like pliers or screwdrivers or anything like that, will go into its own pile as well. Well, that pile already exists on a windowsill in there. But we can put it into its own box. <laughs> <laughs> We've spent a while already organizing, rearranging, moving around everything, and trying to get it into like more functional piles. So we don't have to do this dance where we keep digging around looking for things for half an hour before actually getting to work. I'm glad we're taking the time to do it today. It's just a lot more work than I was expecting. But really this is just like a big major clean that needs to happen. Like when every trade normally finishes a job, they go through and clean up all their mess. They take all their supplies, they take all their tools and they leave. And the problem with being the everything person is that all your tools have nowhere to go and all your supplies have nowhere to go. And it's like, it's been winter, so we can't just like put them outside. Rusty is completely full. The shelter logic has got a tractor and all kinds of other stuff piled in there. Our trailer, there's no room for anything. So it's like, where does all the leftover stuff have to stay? It has to stay here in the house. And it just gets piled up and moved around and shifted. And now it's like, okay, we have 10,000 individual pieces of <laughs> stuff. Let's spend a week and organize it and clean it and make it nice so that we can do insulation and make an enormous mess. Condense that down to four hours and you have my approval. Try to wake up from a dream. So we've got a framing pile, tools, boxes of tools, tapes and glues, nails and screws, electrical, and plumbing. And we're not done yet, but it's starting to feel a little bit more manageable. And this is gonna make a huge difference. I guess the big problem is we've really only got like 80% done with the bathroom. So we got most of the stuff moved out of the bathroom. There's a couple things in there I need to organize. And then that room will be cleaned out and then we'll start in the kitchen and then we'll start in the front room and then we'll get out the rest of the stuff from upstairs. And then uh, maybe we'll wait and do downstairs later. Yeah. <laughs> really satisfying about watching you vacuum. You like that? <laughs> I, I really enjoy that. That's kind of rude. <laughs> all the stuff's in the sunroom, it's all vacuumed, and that's about all I got done. I mean, I moved most of the stuff into the sunroom, but I wasn't able to vacuum until this, so. It looks great. Oh, it feels like we haven't really made progress at all. We made a bunch. We only had four and a half bags of that insulation left. I have one piece left that I need to put on. I got basically the bottom half of the bathroom done. A good amount, like, you know, four or five pieces into the kitchen. It's heating up. But guess what? It's supposed to snow in two days. We're not out of the woods yet. And tomorrow we gotta go get more insulation. A 
lot of particles that come with insulation and I don't like to be covered in them. I said we should get hazmat suits. Yeah, right. What do you mean, yeah, right? I would be a stinky, sweaty, suffocating... Yeah, but then you'd be clean afterwards. You'd take a shower anyway. Probably tear it. So the problem is actually locating the insulation. I wanted to use rock wool because they're like the original people that used mineral wool insulation and I can't find it anywhere. And it's like multiple weeks out if I want to have it shipped. And so now I've been trying to find it at different Home Depots and it's like, oh, there's a couple bags here. There's a couple bags there. We sent Brandon to get 15 bags the other day and when he showed up, I already bought 15 bags online so that he could go pick it up. And when he showed up, they were like, hey, we only have nine bags. So we are like, ah, like, give us the nine bags and let's get them installed. And so nine bags did the sunroom and about, yeah, I probably could have done the whole bathroom if I didn't put those other bats in other places, but I wanted to do as little cutting as possible. So I put the full bats where I could get them. I would say we have a lot more bags to go. Probably like 50 more bags. The good news is, is that by the time all of this snow melts, we can get a dumpster truck up here and they can come and drop off a dumpster and Frank and Brandon are gonna take all of the garbage and put it in the dumpster. I'm just kidding. We're gonna load it all into the dumpster and someone's gonna come and pick it up and- uh, Soon. We'll probably have to do that a couple times because there's just gonna be garbage forever, I think, but. Tomorrow we're gonna get more insulation and we're gonna keep knocking it out. Well, we had a great day today. We are actually making progress and I could not be more excited. Tonight, I'm actually gonna be kicking back and relaxing with a nice glass of wine from Wink. And Wink is the sponsor of today's video. Wink is revolutionizing the way you discover, buy, and share wine. They're a unique wine subscription service that works directly with vineyards and winemakers to introduce you to wines that match your taste. Whether you're vegan, keto, or just prefer low sugar, you can find exactly what you're looking for on their website. So if you guys wanna get access to exceptional small lot wines from around the world, click the link in our description. You guys are gonna get 50% off for a four bottle box. It's only $33 plus free shipping. Thanks again to Wink for sponsoring today's video. I'm gonna finish this glass of wine and we'll catch you guys in the morning. Good morning, everybody. We are getting after it bright and early, even though it's like 29 degrees out here, it's still pretty chilly. And Brandon went to go pick up our insulation this morning and we bought a bunch of the two by six bats that we need for the rest of the walls in the house. And when Brandon showed up, they had none. Last time we bought 15, he showed up, they had nine. Today we bought 15, he showed up, they had zero. So do you get a refund? Yeah. Okay. They no, they keep your order. they keep your money. That's weird. They let you <laughs> buy them though. It's silly. yeah, they're right. It doesn't make any sense. Their inventory system is like obviously having problems. <laughs> the one lady said that uh, insulation is the new toilet paper. No, which is, which is just what everybody says when something's out of stock. They're like, oh, it's the new toilet paper. Yeah, fireplaces. They're the new toilet paper. It's like, okay, guy. Um, so I had him pick up a bunch of two by four bats and. We don't really need that many two by four bats and now we have a ton. So we're gonna see if we can utilize this in some places and hopefully we'll be able to get some two by six bats soon. I wish I could like do the calculations easily and figure out exactly how many we need and maybe like order them, but I don't know how many we need. So I'm just gonna have to go and pick up the ones that we can from the stores that are around here and go run around there. like a chicken with my head cut off. like bale and hay. <laughs> Bad right now. Well, yeah. It's frozen still. It's like Wait the three wet, hours. The yeah. wet stuff's frozen, and then like from here up, we've got a dry walkway. Yeah. Could not get any better. <laughs> it could get a little warmer. Tomorrow it's supposed to snow four inches. <laughs>
disaster. <laughs> Couple little ruts right there. I mean, you made it. <laughs> well, hopefully it doesn't get like soft and slushy and I get stuck right here. <laughs> yeah, seriously. We're gonna smooth all this out and compact it eventually anyway. And now, most importantly, we can remove all the trash that's on the deck into the tailgate and take it to the dump later this afternoon. What is really exciting is up until today, Lika has been able to jump off with no hesitation of the deck, but can't climb back on. We have a ramp right here and it is steep. Frank doesn't use it. He just jumps up and down off of the ledge itself, but uh, she's a pretty agile dog. And today, finally, for the first time ever, we don't have to get down and pick her up and put her on the deck every time she jumps off. She's starting to jump on by herself. how deep those ruts are. I'm here to help today. I finally found a respirator so that I can uh, be a little bit closer to all the insulation. Just like toilet paper, respirators are very hard to find these days, but I too was born in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> it's been uh, kind of annoying because we keep making like the toilet paper jokes, obviously, but because of the pandemic, for some reason, construction has been like booming. I don't know if like people want to get out of the city, so they're building houses outside of the city, or they're moving from densely populated states to places like Salt Lake City and, and the surrounding areas. And it's made it really difficult because pretty much every time we get to a specific stage in the construction process, it's like, oh, all this stuff is back ordered. Oh, all this stuff has problems. When we were trying to order our metal roof uh, in the fall so that we could get the metal roof on before winter, it was like eight to 10 weeks out when we wanted to order the metal roof. Now it takes two weeks, but we can't get the truck up here to deliver the metal roofing because the roads are super muddy. So it just seems like Everything that's in a shortage lines up with when we need it and when we don't need it There's or when we can't have it. There's not a shortage. So we're uh, just taking everything with a grain of salt We're gonna be doing insulation um, in the the few two by four walls that we do have <sighs> Wish us luck All right, so I know you guys are probably saying, Trent, why are you insulating that half wall? It's not to contain heat, it's to stop the transfer of noise and echoes and to dampen. And we have a lot of the two by four bats, so why not? progress by leaps and bounds. We did all of the upstairs stairwell, the half wall, the master. Now we're just coming down here to under the stairs. So now that we got the stairwell, the, the half wall, all those two by four walls completely insulated with the insulating bats, 
these two by four walls and the other bathroom two by four walls are gonna get uh, fire and sound bats. So they're a little bit different. They're not an insulating bat. They're just like a sound barrier. And it also is fire resistant. So they use it as a fire block as well. That's gonna go around the bathrooms, mostly because we want the washer and dryer to be as sound dampened as possible because you don't wanna hear your washer and dryer throughout the house. Also, uh, you know, the bathrooms, because of what goes on in a bathroom, you kinda want some, some sound dampening through the walls of the bathroom as well. So we're gonna wait to do those walls. The two by four baths are really nice because they're made for a two by four wall instead of a two by six, which is five and a half inches. These are or three and a half inches, excuse me. And so in the floor of the main level, there is a 14 inch TJI. Now we're not gonna fill that with 14 inches of insulation because that would be insane. Uh, but I did wanna use the two by eight bats, which would basically be like two, two by four bats, but you can't get the two by eight bats. We can't even get the two by six bats, but there are two by four bats available. So we're gonna be doubling up the two by four bats in the floor to make this floor sound dampened and insulated very well because it's just no matter what we do it's always going to be cold in the basement and we don't want that cold creeping up unless it's the summertime but anyways we don't want the cold creeping up so we're going to be insulating this floor with two two by four baths in every bay and we're going to get started on that right now i think you need a ladder need a ladder and safety glasses well, we're running into a little issue here, and that's that the TJIs are spaced at 16 inches on center, which is what these bats are meant for. But a two by four on each side makes that gap a little bit smaller than the TJIs, because they just have a half inch piece of basically OSB in the middle. So the two by four bats are not necessarily friction fitting. They're not like staying up in there. They will be kind of held up by these bottom cords but we have like so many pipes and all kinds of stuff that are kind of close to the, the bottom cords that it won't really work that well. And I don't know what to do. <laughs> well, we ended up using all 12 bags of the two x four insulation and I'd say we got maybe like 40% of this floor insulated. We need 10 more bags we figured out in order to finish this floor. And then the spray foam guy needs to do the walls and the rim board down there. He needs to do the ceiling. And then we need to figure out how much of the safe and sound bat we need for these walls, bathroom upstairs, the duck chase, and this floor. And then we need the two by six insulating bats for the rest of the exterior walls. And that's gonna be the hard stuff to find. I'm gonna get online and see what I can find, but basically we're kind of between a rock and a hard place. Bad news is it's gonna to snow tomorrow. <laughs> the good news is we could probably start working on ordering or buying the service entry cable, the big electrical line that's gonna come from the street all the way up to the house. And we could pull it except for it's gonna snow four inches tomorrow and we don't really wanna do that in the snow and the mud and the muck and the yuck and the la 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 la. I guess we'll just uh, have to cross that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> That's about all we have for today because we're out of insulation. We can't really do much more. Uh, we do have to take a trip to the dump though. So you guys are gonna come and see what our dump looks like. <laughs> Take it easy. I don't hate insulation as bad as I hate trying to find insulation. <laughs>
the sting. Yeah. depressing coming to the dump normally because it's just like the things that you have to throw away you have to let go of and they have to go somewhere and it's nice that in the states we have designated areas where they can go but it still makes you sad to come here and just kind of witness the consumerism or the waste that we pretty much are all part of yeah and really what we do is not any different than what they do in south america or central america it's just that they don't have big machinery that comes and buries it. They just have giant piles of garbage and trash that everyone kind of takes it to a similar place. And then most of the time it either spontaneously combusts or they light it on fire. And when you see that, it's like so repulsive and it stinks and you're just like, why would they just be dumping their garbage here? But then when you come back to the States, like you realize, oh, we dump our garbage out here outside of town too. It's just, we have machinery that buries it and then you know hides it from your sight. So we're not so different after all. It actually smelled like Christmas trees. It actually smelled good. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've never been to a dump that didn't smell like rotten garbage. So yeah. that was a nice, a nice treat. <laughs> I was on a plane to California I had all the time I'd ever need Did you even know I was looking for ya? I think that I was hiding in between How long, how long, how long did you wait for me? Well guys, let me show you a little bit of what's going on here. That right there is just a big plate full of love. We got Indian takeout. We brought it back home, I showered, I got ready, I'm just about to dig into my food. Things are moving slowly but surely and I think we've actually made an order where we're gonna get a lot of the insulation. It's gonna be here hopefully later this week, but uh, keep your fingers crossed because who knows if it's actually gonna happen or not. But honestly, you have no idea how good it feels to shower after you've been insulating all day. <laughs> like, I didn't realize how like gritty and fine and covered in dust I was. I cannot even wait to get into drywall. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I can't even I can't even think about it right now. Anyway, we hope you guys enjoyed coming along on today's adventure. If you did, make sure you show us by giving us a big thumbs up on today's video. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks again to Wink for sponsoring today's video. Click the link in our description to check them out. See you guys. Adios.